Breast examinations are a commonly performed clinical examination and are undertaken for numerous indications, including nostalgia, changes to the skin of the nipple or breast, nipple discharge, and most commonly, for breast lumps. Alongside taking a thorough clinical history, breast examinations form a key component of the triple assessment approach to breast irregularities, in addition to pathological assessment and radiological assessment. Breast cancer is the most common malignancy in women globally, and therefore it's really important that medical students and junior doctors are confident and competent in performing this essential examination. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can save 20% of Surgical Teaching Premium. Okay, let's make a start. After washing our hands, we introduce ourselves to the patient, check their identity, explain what the examination involves and why it's being performed, and finally, gain their verbal consent. Given the nature of the examination, it's important that we have a chaperone present, and they should also be introduced to the patient. For the examination, the patient should be exposed from the waist up. We start by asking them to sit on the edge of the bed, so that we can inspect the patient and the breasts. The general inspection of the breasts is done by asking the patient to place their hands behind their head. We then look for any asymmetry, scars, obvious lumps or swellings, and any nipple abnormalities. The patient is then asked to gently rest their hands upon their hips, without contracting the pectoral muscles. The breast is again inspected for irregularities, asymmetries, and also any skin changes, such as podon orange or eczema. We then ask the patient to press their hands into their hips to contract the pectoralis muscles. And again, we inspect the breast for asymmetries, irregularities, or any evidence of a tethering of a mass that may have invaded the pectoralis fascia, and thus is accentuated by contraction of the muscle. The patient is then asked to lie in a semi-reclined position, and we position ourselves on their right-hand side, so that we can then continue the rest of the examination. If the patient has reported any specific abnormality, then we should start by examining the normal breast first. We ask the patient to place the hand of the side we're examining behind their head. Inform the patient that palpation should not be painful, but that if they do feel any discomfort, that they should let us know. We then systematically examine the whole breast with the flat of our fingers, starting centrally at the areola and palpating clockwise in ever-increasing circles to cover the rest of the breast tissue. And also, the auxiliary tail of the breast tissue, which extends towards the axilla. Next, we palpate the nipple, and we gently squeeze the nipple to see if we're able to reproduce any discharge if the patient has reported this in their clinical history. We then examine the patient's axilla, lowering the patient's arm and supporting its full weight and we palpate the four walls of the axilla, anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral, as well as finally palpating the apex, noting any palpable lymph nodes as we do so. After asking the patient to place their other hand behind their head, we then proceed to examine the other breast in the exact same fashion. Palpating the breast in a clockwise, ever-increasing circles, then palpating the auxiliary tail, gently palpating and squeezing the nipple, and finally, examining the axilla while supporting the patient's arm. Finally, we palpate for any lymphadenopathy in the infraclavicular region, 
and the supraclavicular fossa on both sides. We then thank the patient and ensure that they're appropriately covered. Having completed the breast exam and washed our hands, we then need to document our findings. Or, if we're in an examination, we report the findings to the examiner. If we've noted any abnormalities, such as a lump, we need to comment on its position, size, consistency, mobility, relationships to adjacent structures, such as the skin or muscle, and also any other relevant associated features. We would then want to organise, or explain to the examiner, completion of the triple assessment of our patient, which in addition to taking a clinical history and performing the examination we've just undertaken, would also include arranging imaging, such as an ultrasound in a younger patient, or mammography in an older patient, and pathological assessment with either fine needle aspiration cytology or a core biopsy. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less, with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.